I'm here on a wet day with Joe Riding and we're going to talk about these beautiful tulips that happen once a year. Yes. And Joe, what is your position in the Tulip Festival? I am the executive director of the Canadian Tulip Festival. Yes, it's quite a wonderful event every year. We have um, people coming from everywhere just everywhere. to see it. Everywhere, yes. yeah, all across the planet they come to visit us right. here. Yeah. And there's a history behind the tulips here in Ottawa. Absolutely, there's a huge history and something that is very unique to Ottawa. So um, originally the first gift of tulips was given by then Princess Juliana um, after she gave birth to her third daughter just up the street at the Ottawa Civic Hospital. Uh, so she sent 100,000 tulips in the first year and then the Dutch have been sending 10,000 tulips to Ottawa every year for the last 79 years. So that must also increase the size of the gardens. So actually in Ottawa there's a million tulip blooms. So 10,000 are split up across the city. So we have 5,000 of them here in the park in the Queen Juliana gift bed. And then they're also sent to the Pearly Rideau, the Veterans uh, Hospital, and then uh, also to Beechwood uh, Military Cemetery. Mm. You were saying earlier that you, you were happy for the rain today and the cool weather. Yes, this is actually great for us. So um, when the weather's really hot, the tulips will bloom faster. So having a day in the fridge like this is wonderful because it'll ensure that we'll have excellent blooms for our opening ceremony and it also means that our late bloomers get a little bit of a slowdown so that they'll all be out by the time we get to the end of the festival. Right, I noticed they're building a stage over to the left and what's going to happen on the stage? So that's our movies and more stage. So we've got free movies in the park, matinees, evening shows. We've got workshops from the um, Ottawa Wild Bird uh, Reserve. Um, we also have a presentation from ACFAS U Ottawa, a group of eight scientists talking about uh, pollinators and plants. Um, but what I'm really excited about for the stage Every night, nine o'clock, we have a sound and light experience called Operation Mana. And that is one of the, well, the largest humanitarian effort that happened during the Second World War. Uh, the RCAF and the RAF did uh, very low flying, dangerous food drops to the Dutch people who had just come out of the hunger winter. So they were existing on boiled tree bark and tulip bulbs. And when uh, our uh, RCAF came, they dropped 11 tons of food. And um, what I did was I took the memoirs from our honored veteran this year. So Ron Shorty Moyes was a World War II Lancaster tail gunner. You know that awful spot in the back of the plane oh, with the I bubble? Yes. yes. So he used to be in there and uh, he was part of Operation Manna. So what we did was we took his memoirs, we adjusted it into a script. Uh, we also took the memoirs of Captain Upcott from Windsor. And then the third character is actually based on a woman I met here in the park last year. She lived through the hunger winter and she received some of the food from our armed forces. That's amazing yeah. history. Yeah, it is. There's, there's nothing like it. It's a royal military romantic story that is unlike anything else in this country. It certainly is and you have so many people just coming in and getting out in the fresh air and enjoying the park. That's it. We really do provide more than, than tangible benefits like increased tourism spending, uh, but it's the intangible benefits that this festival provides that I love the most. Seeing community, come together. We know how hard isolation can be with people after the yes. years we've been through. Um, seeing all the babies and the dogs in the park and all the smiles on people's faces. Uh, it really does make a difference for Ottawans and, and for everybody. Tell us about Blacklight Blackboard. So our Blacklight Boardwalk is back for the third year and it's about almost a kilometer of UV lit tulips and daffodils. And the reason we do that is because bees and butterflies see in the UV spectrum. So we notice that the pollen glows and they leave little trails for each other that we can't see. 
So it's a fantastic way for people to come out, enjoy the flowers in a whole new light, and learn about the importance of pollinators and stewardship of our planet. My word, I think Tulip Festival has come a long way over the years. Oh, thank and you. And it's very creative. You've introduced so many new, interesting facets to it. Yes, it's really been my mission to um, reroute the festival into the history and the horticulture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have lots of other music festivals and arts festivals, but there really is only one tulip festival. So it was really important to me to commemorate the sacrifice and most importantly, educate the next generation about what these gifts of tulips really mean. And the public can also buy these some of these tulips. You have special commemorative tulips. Yes, so uh, part of the way that we raise <laughs> funds to keep the festival free is by selling cut tulips in the park. We also will have potted tulips and potted daffodils this year. Last year we did our RCAF campaign, so we had four special tulips dedicated to the RCAF, and they're just over there in our festival bed. They're a really neat story. So we have the rescue tulip, orange and uh, red stripe with uh, feathered edges. That is a nod to the rescue uh, crafts because they're in that color. We have the Ad Astra, a white triumphator tulip. So it has reflex petals. That means they go outwards instead of coming in. And so we called it the Ad Astra because that's obviously the RCAF motto is reach to the stars. So the white triumphator, the Ad Astra. Then we have our wings, which is a um, fringed edge yellow tulip. That's a nod to the training wings. So those little planes that uh, they practice on are yellow. And then we have our flyers, which is a red fringed tulip. And that's a nod to the RCAF's hockey team that won the Olympics. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, so we are launching our pre-sales for next year because of course you plant in the fall to celebrate in the spring. Right. So next year we're celebrating 80 years since the liberation of the Netherlands and we're celebrating with the Canadian Army. So what we did was we chose a tulip that is a double petaled white for peace and on the outside is a green and gold stripe as a nod to the army. How beautiful. They're gorgeous. Yes. yes. And of course I can't ask you which is your favorite tulip. That is tough. That's like asking a mom which child is her favorite. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I do love the double petals. I do love the hemisphere, which is a, a fantastic variety of a raspberry hue. They always come out different from each other, but all in the same color family. And then I think another one I'm really partial to is the club tulips. They are more than one tulip on a stem, which is really unusual. And so the candy club is a beautiful pink and white, but with many on the stem. Yes, yeah, so it's wonderful for these tulips. Every spring after a long gray, dull winter, you come out into this beauty of color. It's true, and you know what? Our founder, Malik Karsh, one of the famous Karsh brothers, the photographers, he actually said almost the exact same thing. In 1946, when the tulips first came up in Ottawa, they brought color back to a really gray world. And we feel like that couldn't be more true. We like to bring color back after the gray winter, after the tough couple years that we've all had. And Malik did mention that tulips were very, very prized long ago. Yes. Families would pull their money to buy one precious bulb. Precious bulb, that's yes. right. So uh, in the 1600s, I think it was about 1634, uh, we had our very first financial bubble in the world, and that was tulip mania. And a single tulip bulb uh, would actually cost the price of a home. And so obviously that wasn't tenable, and eventually the bubble burst and tulips became a far more reasonable commodity to purchase. But the most uh, expensive tulip was what they call a broken tulip, and that means it had stripes in it. And the stripes are actually created by a virus. So, oh. yeah, it's a, it's a neat story, but yes. uh, the, the striped tulip was tops. Well, I think your tops 
for inviting us here today and we want to invite everyone else to come and really enjoy all the events that are planned, just the beauty and being outdoors and appreciating these beautiful tulips that were originally gifted from a queen in Holland. That's wonderful. Thank you for coming out and Thank visiting you. us. Thank you too. The Canadian Tulip Festival is on from May 10th to May 20th. Uh, activities are on from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can come and shop at the Tulip Market where we've got uh, local handcrafted vendors with tulip themed merchandise. Uh, some of my favorites, candle makers, woodworkers, and all of that. Um, and of course, the uh, movies are free, the food trucks are open, and, uh, and then we get into our night shows, which are also free to the public. So Boardwalk is open uh, all day, every day, but the lights turn on and get funky at 8 o'clock. How exciting is that? It is so exciting. It is such a thrill to welcome the whole world to our beautiful city. And children will adore this because it'll bring them back every year. That's it. When we see the smile on these kids' faces, when they look at the flowers and they play with the, uh, the tulip towns, but there was a, um, a video done from uh, another news station last year. They were interviewing kids about what they like best about the festival. And there was a little guy standing in front of the garden and he just says, all these tulips and you could just see how overwhelming it was and the beauty it's unmatched it is mm -hmm. i've just been interviewing joe riding the director of the tulip festival here in ottawa and we'll be back bye for now